saying? We got to do better than that. Jesus is alive and well. Got here, I mean, not earlier. Alive and well. He don't have to show up just at the service. He, he ought to show up when you show up. And when you show up in Sunday school, it just carries on to the service. You know what I'm talking about? So I'm, I'm excited this morning, and my heart was filled this morning when I got a chance to hear that and hear my brother in Sunday school. Uh, before we start, let us pray. Lord, with everything we have, we have prepared. We have provided for us, Lord. Lord, we just want to say thank you. We want to thank you that you are Lord, and we know that things are going to work out, Lord, the way you want them to work out if you want them. Lord, already know, Lord. We thank you for their faith. We thank you for their their steadfastness in you, Lord, and not just them, but we thank you for the others that are sick right now, be it COVID, whatever it may be, Lord, we ask that you just bless them, Lord, we ask that you bless the families that are sick without them, Lord, and give them strength, Lord, and God, we pray for those that are, that are lost, Lord, that, that have a desire to come, bless them to get back to you, Lord, I pray that let this day be one. Lord, please let them see you, not me. Speak to them. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna keep you long. But if you got your Bibles, answer my question. May differ just a little. Genesis 22, 13. Amen. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am. Right. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up, loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servant, stay here, donkey, while I and the boy go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied, the fire and the wood are here. Isaac said, where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him, Abraham built an altar, arranged the wood on it, found his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife and cut the wood. The angel of the Lord called out to him, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God. You have not withheld from me your son. Abraham looked up, and there in the thicket he saw a ram 
caught by his horn, went over, took the ram, sacrificed it, and burnt offering. But this morning it seemed we got trust in God in all things. Y'all can have a seat. Trust in God in all things. And, you know, you got to ask yourself, do we really trust God in all things? Really trust God when things are going good, when everything is well with family and friends and you got money in the bank, your health is good, everything is going all right. It's easy to say, I trust the Lord. I have faith in the Lord. God is good. And it's easy to say that. But, it, you know, do, but do we trust him during trials and tribulations? Do we trust him when we go through certain things? When we have trial, when we go through turbulent times, can we trust him the same way? Can we have the same spot we have when everything was good? Uh, we are living in turbulent times right now. Would y'all agree? Living right now in turbulent times. It, it's a lot of stuff going on right now. It's a lot of wicked people. It's more hatred and division in this world now than it's ever been. All right? We got uh, epidemics going on, pandemics going on. We got things going on right now. That's increased. Oh, and some people are going, some people are committing suicide behind it. People are losing jobs behind this. There's a lot of things going on, but God is still in control. But we shouldn't be surprised because the Bible speaks of these times in Matthew 24 and 7. And it reads, For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famine, pestilences, and earthquakes in divers places. Okay? We have famine going on in this world right now. We got a small one right now. Remember the stuff you used to be able to get when you went to the store? Go get off the shelf. Go in store shelves now and see how empty they are right now. A lot of it has to do with this pandemic. It's not, we're not in the famine, but things are not as uh, prevalent out there as it was before. Things are not on the shelves. And the things that are on the shelves are what? But there's places in the world, these people are starving. There is a famine. There's famine happening. We are living in the end times right now. It talks about uh, pestilence. Pestilence. Let me tell you what a pestilence is. Pestilence is a fatal epidemic disease. What do we have going on right now? See what I'm talking about? We shouldn't be shocked and surprised when we see these things. See, God is Christian. We ought to know what our words say. We ought to know, but Jesus said these things have to happen before I come back. He is on his throne. He wants us to trust him, but we got to know the world's going to be shocked. Those that don't know their word is going to be shocked. People are wondering, why is this happening? Why is God letting this happen? If you read your word, he said this has to happen before I get back. And it lets us know that he's closer to coming back than we think he is. And it talks about earthquakes. We ain't talking about just earthquakes. We're talking about hurricanes. You think about all these weather phenomena we have now. Hotter than it's ever been. We got earthquakes in places that we didn't have earthquakes before. You got hurricanes that are stronger. People are blaming what? Global warming. No, God said these things were going to happen. And these things are starting to happen. We got to read our Bible and understand that we got to get closer to God. When we see these things happening, we know God is on his way back. And so we, we shouldn't be shocked. And we talked about diverse places. We're talking about various places. This, these things are happening all over in different places, in places that you never would have thought. People are seeing tornadoes in places they never thought they'd see one. They're seeing rain. They're seeing cold. Flooding in the Northeast like they've never seen ever before. This ain't global warming. Well, I guess you can if you see it. Scientists want to see it. But I look at it as a sign that God is on his way back, and we should not be shocked. Many times God will test us just like he tests Abraham. And when he tests us, it's time for us to start looking. If I'm still failing the same test that God gave me before, I got a problem. I'm not growing. In order for me to grow, I got to start passing some tests. I got to start, and each test get what? A little bit harder. But I get a little bit stronger. You know what I'm talking about? After each test, I ought to get better. I ought to be strong because when the next test comes, and the test ain't for God. It ain't for him to go, let me see what you're going to make. He already know what you're going to do. He, he knew what Abraham was going to do. The test is for us. It's to show us where we are in our faith, in our trust, when we, when we say we trust him. God, okay, you say you trust me. I'm going to find out right now. Just how much. And we find out. I've been tested. I have had some issues with some of these tests. I have. I ain't going to lie to you. I ain't going to sit here and tell you I did. No, I have issues. I do. Things I need to work on. Because you know what? I know what God can do. I know he can deliver you. Okay? And he has delivered me so many times. But I've seen times that things start getting rough. And this is when people go back to thinking, 
I remember the, uh, the Israelites, when things started getting rough, when they started thinking about the past, God, I don't know what I'm going to do. The same God that delivered me from this, here I am asking, what am I going to do? And But I find myself, and I'm glad I'm maturing a little bit in the word in the Lord, that now I know who to go to. I, I, I do. I, I start thinking and start, start feeling sorry for myself and start trying to figure out an earthly or manly way to deal with it. But now then I come to my senses. I got a God that can take care of this. Why am I? We go through so much that we don't have to go through. We stress over things we don't have to stress over. Because we got a God that will take care of everything. Yeah, we do. We do. We don't have to stress over these things. We don't have to go through some of the stuff we go through. We have not because we ask not. Huh? We ask not. We have to go through them in everything. Not some things. Not when, not, don't, we don't want to wait till things get really bad. Because that's when we want to go to them. God, now I ain't got no choice. He ought to be our first choice. Our first choice, not man. We're letting him be the second choice. God needs to be the first choice. Now, I'm not telling you not to trust man. I'm not telling you. There's some people out there that you trust. I'm not telling you don't trust your doctor. What he says, you need to do what they tell you to do. I'm not trust you tell you not to trust your lawyer. If you got one, you need to do what they tell you to do. But trust God through him to work through him. You see what I'm talking about? That's who you go through. Don't trust the vaccine. Huh? Now, I know some people listening to me going, whoa. Don't trust the vaccine. I trust the man who created it. I trust the one who, who can take away through a vaccine, with or without it. See, it ain't the vaccine. It's him. It's him. With or without it, it's God. So people are fussing and fighting on who got it, who don't have it. If I got God, it don't make a difference. Because I'm going to tell you something. There's people with the vaccine leaving here just like people without it. It's in God's hand. And that's why we have to trust God. If it's his will that I should go this way, then it's his will. And we can't control that. See, we try to control God, his will. And we try to do, we want to do what we want to do when we want to do it. God don't work like that. When we trust him, we have to trust and obey him. Faith and obedience equals, equals trust. You can't have one without the other. I can't say I got faith in God. I can't say I have faith in God. And I don't obey him. I can't say I have faith in God and then things go bad and I don't trust that he is who he is. You got to trust that God is. If you believe he is who he is, then you got to trust that. You got to trust it. Not, not say it. It's one thing to say it. It's another thing to really trust it. Abraham, Abraham had to think about what Abraham was going through. Now, see, the Bible so many times don't tell us how people were feeling when they were going through certain things. But Abraham, God then blessed Abraham with a son. See, God is specific on what he asks you to do. See, sometimes we try to substitute for God. Hey, God, I know what you told me. I got this other one over here I can add, put in there. Then, see, see, it didn't work out for Cain. See, but we'll try that. So God was specific. He spoke to Abraham. He told him which son. Your only son. Well, when he's talking about the only son, he's talking about the son. That's the son that I promised you. That's the son that I promised you. And called him by name, Isaac. Okay? Ain't no question who I want. All right? So you got to think about Abraham was human. Now you think about it. I ain't asking you to please don't raise your hand. If you want. I can't tell you what I would do. If God told you, take him and go sacrifice. You tell me how to take him. Or a loved one. Now think about that now. Abraham is going, wait a minute, God. You just told me that my seed was going to outnumber the sand, the stars, and now you want me to take the one seed that I got, and you want me to kill it? Abraham didn't question that. And we're going we're gonna to go on. We're going to learn when we take a closer look at Genesis 10, 2, 1 through 13. We see in verse 2 where God tells Abraham, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering. Mounting, I will show you. God was specific on which son he wanted Abraham to take. And we know he had two sons. There was no question which son God wanted Abraham to take. Complete obedience to God is essential if you want to trust God. If you want to obey God, if you want to obey God the way we want to obey God, when it's convenient for us. You know what I'm talking about? God don't work like that. Obedience is all the time. It's essential. Period. We either obeying it or we not obeying it. In all things, 
Abraham obeyed God. He obeyed. Now, he ain't liking it. I don't sit here and tell me, Abraham, he human. I'm going to go ahead and have to kill my son, but Abraham what? Trusted God. Abraham feared God. See, we don't fear God enough. If we fear God like we're supposed to, things will be a little different in this world right now. People wouldn't do and say anything in this world right now. But Abraham feared God. He did just what God told him. He didn't hesitate. He didn't question. Not saying he didn't fear. Now, I'm not telling you. God can tell you some things to do that don't make sense to us. That we don't, we don't, I don't know how God did that. God want me to go over here and talk to the man in one B over in the apartment. I can walk right out this door, right over there, and about the next 10 minutes, be over there and talk to him. No, I ain't doing that. I want you to leave out your back door. I want you to get on collars. I want you to walk down collars to 75. Don't get in your truck. See, I want you to walk. Take collars. Go all the way to 75. Turn right on 75. I want you to go up to the feet of I-45. Hold up, God. You know how long that is? I ain't asked you that. See what I'm talking about? This is the route I want you to take, okay? As you go up, I want you to keep walking, all right? You're going to pass up the feet. Come on down the field. Come up 21. Go to the apartment. Then talk to him. Now I'm tired. I'm going to be tired. I'm going to be sweaty. I'm going to be mustard. It's hot outside. You see where we go sometimes when God asks us to do something? It's hot outside. My feet hurt. I got bad knees. I do. I got two of them. God, I got a bad back. See, I'm giving every excuse in the world not to do what God asked me. But who going to give me what I need on that path? God is. See? What, what, what we have to realize is when God sent us somewhere, there's a plan. We got to be willing to do his will. We got to follow the plan. Now, if I deviate and say, I got to tell you what, God, I'm going to tell you what, God, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm saving you time, God. I'm going to walk out here and go talk to him. But it could be something going on over there that God don't want me to come in contact with. See, a lot of times he takes us around things. We think we're late. He'll take you around things to protect you. It's things that he's protected us from. You never even knew about. It's dangers that he had protected us from that you don't even know about. Just because you did what he asked you to do the way he asked you to do it. It's a very dangerous thing not to obey God. Because, the con because there are consequences. It's consequences. Oh, disobedience is a sin. And there is consequences to it. Every time I've disobeyed him, I've hit a wall. Every time I try to do what Darnell wanted to do, I, I got stopped. Now, he'll let me go on for a while, but it stopped. Because disobedience is not his will. He wants us to be obedient. And that's one thing that Abraham had. And that's the one thing that we see. We have to do things the way God wants us to do them in his way. Uh, and uh, there was no question on which son God wanted Abraham to take. Complete obedience to God is essential if we are to trust him. First Samuel 15, 22 says, Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. Okay? Many times we think coming to church, man, I'm going to do this. Sacrifice my whole day for it. God ain't going to ask me how to sacrifice my whole day. He don't need sacrifice. He already gave us the best sacrifice he could ever give us. He want obedience. Not sacrifice. See, people substitute. They think if I sacrifice, then God will be okay with it. No, he's not. Sacrifice ain't what God wants. He wants our complete obedience. Period. It ain't a question about sacrifice. It ain't a question. When I sacrifice, it's about me. And I'm trying to substitute something for obedience. There is no substitute for obedience. There is no substitute. Either I'm obeying or I'm not. I'm obeying God. With, if I'm obey, I have to read the Bible. I have to know what that word says. I can't say I obey God and I have no idea what's in here. I have to know what's in here. I have to know what does say to the Lord if I'm going to obey. I can hear it. I can hear from the preacher, but my grandma told me, you got to go get it for yourself. You got to read it for yourself and, 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 and be blessed by God. But as, as we go on, um, he said, uh, here we, we look in verse 3. Okay, the first example in verse 3 of Abraham's trust in God. And it says, early in the morning, Abraham got up, loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. And he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering. He set out for the place God had told him. See here, Abraham didn't question God. God told him. Abraham didn't question God. God say move, you need to move. See, Abraham could have said, God, you know what? I, I, I'll get into it next month. 
I'm going to wait until the weather gets a little bit better because you might change your mind. See, we miss our blessings sometimes because we don't move when God say move. Because it's not convenient. It may not be convenient for us, but we thinking, we thinking with our own mind. God, it ain't right for me to move right now. It's too dangerous for me to move. God, I don't know this place over here. I don't know these people. Young people, sometimes we get ready to go to school and we going to do what I think. I don't, I've never been here before. But when God say move, move. Because guess what? He moving with you. He ain't going to send you somewhere and leave you there by yourself. So Abraham got up the next morning. He got his stuff together. Now, is Abraham happy? No. Now, I'm still, I can see him. He upset. He get, can you imagine gathering wood and, and you grabbing equipment to go what? Kill your child. So you gathering equipment to go do it. He's troubled. But it, did he stop? No. He kept doing what God asked him to do. And, and that's what we have to do. And he don't, and not question God. Many times, we want to question God or do things our way instead of following God's instruction. When we trust God, we do, we do what he asks without question. Without question. Uh, this demonstrates not only our trust, but our belief and our faith in him. We come, when we do what God asks, we have faith in him. We're saying, God, I trust you. We, I trust you. My grandmother used to say, she had a saying she used to say, she used to say, I will, I will accept what the Lord allows. Now, you got to be deep in faith to make that statement. Because God can allow a lot of things to change your life. She said that. She would say that. I'm going to accept what he allows to happen. Because he knows what's best. See, when God's will, we got to be willing to follow it. But God knows what's best for us. He does. He knows what's best for Darn it, better than I do. I think I know what's best, but I got to be willing to follow God's will all the time. I got to be obedient to God's Amen. will and, my, and, and his services. You know what I'm talking about? He, he might not have me to preach or to teach. Whatever he got for me to do, I need to do it. And I need to do it and obey what he has for me to do. Another example of Abraham's trust in God we find in verse 5. Abraham said to his servant, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship, then we will come back. Abraham demonstrated trust and faith in the Lord by indicating to his servant that they, not just he, will come back to him. Because he missed that one. See, when he left the servant stuff, Remember now, what did God tell him to go sacrifice? Son. He told his servant, stay here. This is how I know Abraham trusted God. He said, we'll be back. Me and my boy are coming back. I don't know what God got planned for me up there. I know what he said, but we'll be back. He didn't say, I'll be back. He said, we'll be back. See, that's trust. That's faith. That's faith because Abraham already knew even Probably feeling bad as he did. God was going to do something. Man, we serve a God that can do anything. You know what I'm talking about? God is doing something right now. People's lives are being as bad as people think things are right now. People are being blessed right now. Somebody's being saved right now. Somebody talking to God they never talked to him before. People are praying now they never prayed to God right now. Something is happening. God is moving right now. He's moving. All we got to do is just trust him. Abraham knew when I go up here, God's going to do something. I don't know what he's going to do. He's going to do something. That's the way we need to see it. I don't know, God, what you're going to do. I don't know where we're going, but I know you're going to do something. All I need to do is follow him. Follow him and do his will. I can't, I can't fear off and say, God, this thing got too rough for me. Because, see, when it get rough, that's when we need to pray. That's when we need to ask for strength. You know what I'm talking about? See, many times when it get rough, we start looking for solutions. We start going to man. Hey, man, I need to talk to him. All right? God wants you to come to him. If you ask for strength, God will give you strength. See, many times we ask for God to take us out of situations. God, remove this situation. Instead of asking that, walk with me through it. God, just be with me through it. Give me strength to get through it because when I come out of it, I'm going to be better. I'm going to be better than I was before I went in it. We're going to be better as Christians when this pandemic is over. We're going to be better. We ought to come out better than we went in. We ought to come out better. We ought to come out stronger because of it. And we got to be willing to accept that. We ask God, God, take this away from me. Moment the bird can be heavy. God, take this away from me. No. God, if it's your will. See, that's what Jesus prayed when he was in the garden of Gethsemane. God, if it's your will, take this cup. If it's your will, God, take this cup. He didn't say, God, take this cup. God, if it's your will. Take this cup. 
but only. God, if it's your will that I should go through this, all I ask you to do is give me strength and walk through it with me. That's it. And that's what we have to pray when we go through stuff. We got to quit praying. We got to quit praying for deliverance. God will deliver. But we need, it's, that's that refining process we go through. See, when we take us out too soon, we can't recover. If I stay in the fire long enough, I come out, I'm better. I'm better. I'm a new person. Fire make things, fire will break things down. You can build up from it. That's what God does with fire. That's what he do. It, it, it's a refiner. It's what fire is. And so sometimes we got to be willing to stay in the fire. Pray while we're in the fire. Trust him in the fire. It's easy to trust him when it's cool, everything cool outside. But can you trust him in the fire? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. They trusted him. They feared God so much, and they were so obedient to God. Okay? They, they even turned the heat up. They turned the heat up. See, sometimes, sometimes when you pray to God, and, and you got to pray, God will make things get just a little bit worse. And you start thinking, God, I prayed to you, and thing got worse. But know what? He's going to be glorified. Oh, yeah, I'm going to make it worse because I'm going to get the glory out of this. I'm going to get some glory out of this. All you got to do is stay there. Stay there. Throw him in there. King Nebuchadnezzar looked in. He said, hmm, they ain't burning. They ain't hollering. They ain't hollering. You don't hear, they ain't heard. They ain't said a word. Something wrong. You throw somebody in fire. A hot fire. They supposed to say something. Okay? They ain't saying nothing. Clothes ain't, ain't burnt. They ain't burnt. He had to look himself. He looked in the furnace himself. He said, did we not throw three in there? He said, did we not throw three of them in there? It was three. And then said, I see four. See, I see four. And, and the fourth one is the image of the Son of God. See, God can make somebody don't believe a believe. You see what I'm talking about? He'll walk with you through the fire. All you got to do is believe and trust him. They, they believed in him so much. They trusted him so much that God will walk with you through the fire. He didn't have to take him out. But guess what? He got the glory from a king that didn't even believe. And the king started telling the people, we're going to serve they God. I want people to say that about me when they see me. I want to serve your God. Because I see what your God can do. And that's, the, and that's what we have to have. That's that fire we have to have. That's that trust we have to have. You know what I'm talking about? See, they were in a very hot place. And see, and the whole thing is, the reason they got put in there, because they wouldn't bow down. Every time they heard the song, they wouldn't bow down. They would only bow down to God. We bow down to too many things today. We don't, you know, we don't, we don't, we ain't out here bowing down to idol God, but we bow down to when a car becomes a car, house comes more important, family comes more important, friends come more important. When we got events that become more important than God, that's what we're doing. We buy down to it. God, God, our God is a jealous God. He don't want anything, any other idols before him. And we make things idle. And the world says it's okay. It's okay. I can remember a time, many of y'all, some of y'all are too young to remember this. On Sunday, you found very few stores. Very few stores was open on Sunday. You might have found one or two convenience stores that was open. A grocery store wasn't open. You close the grocery store now and see what happens on a Sunday. You close some of these businesses now and see what happens. You see what I'm talking about? Things have changed because we have taken our focus off of what Sunday, what the Sabbath was all about. It was by God. That's why things were closed. So people could go worship and go to church and give him reverence. But look what the world has done now. God is on the back burner. Somebody trying to get to watch the football game right now. They would rather watch the NFL than come and give God just a little bit of their time. But see, I'm gonna tell you, in the end, the NFL got to go. It got to go. I was, I was there. I mean, me and my daddy, man, we we were sitting at the house. We want to go on to church. My mama get up and she gone. We know what she did. We be mad when she come home. On to church. She wouldn't say a word. We getting ready for battle. We getting ready. We getting ready. God got a way of getting your attention. He got a way of getting your attention. And he got mine through my daddy. He got his when he took him where he took him. And I watched what he did to him and how he brought him back. See, I watched that. But see, we got to give God our all. I don't care what day it is. It can be Sabbath, Monday. God gets everything. Okay? Let me move on just a little bit. I'm almost done, y'all. I promise. Um, the final example of Abraham's trust in God comes in verses 9 through 12. When they reached the place and had told him that, that God had told him about. 
Abraham built an altar there, arranged the wood on it, found his son Isaac, laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand, took the knife to slay his son. The angel of the Lord called out to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Do not lay your hand on me. Oh, this do not believe me, because you have not withheld your son. Truly trust God, we will not withhold our blessing. We withhold too much from God. We hold back from God. We don't give him our best. I'm not going to say that. I don't give him our best. He gives God the very best we have. Every day. Ourselves. Every day we all give God our very best. You know what? I'm glad God didn't give us second best. See, when Jesus went to the cross, God gave us his best. He said the best he had. Out of heaven. He sent the very best. He didn't send second best. Because see, second best wouldn't have saved my soul. Second best wouldn't have gave me eternal life. He sent the very best he had. The very best. His own see, Abraham, he stopped him from killing his only son. But see, he didn't stop the man from killing his. Because he was that perfect sacrifice. See, God is good. God is, God is, God is so good that. He gives us his best. He gives us. He wants to give us the best he has. He does. He wants to have a relationship with us. He, 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 he wants that. He don't have to have nothing, but he, but he wants that. We were created to worship and to praise him. He wants to worship and fellowship. We just got to open that door, and he's knocking. He's knocking. There, now, see, there's more than one person knocking. Talk about Jesus knocking. He is more than one person knocking. See, the devil knocks too. But see, too many of us, what, devil, what the devil's do, it's a revolving door. He going in and out when he come in. When you ever seen a revolving door, you go in there any kind of way. It just, it just keeps swinging in and out when he want to come in. We got Jesus door over here. He won't even come in. You know, he was seeing him out there. And all he wants to do is open it. We open the door and let him come in. Man, I'm telling you, this is a wonderful life. Living in the kingdom of heaven. It's a wonderful life. But we got a choice to make. Because all the doors are going to be shut at some point. Every door going to be closed. When he come back, ain't going to be no door. Ain't going to be a need for one. It's going to be too late. It's time now. We got time right now to get it done. We got time right now to start giving him what he deserves. That's our full obedience, trusting him, loving him more than anything in this world. God's been too good to us. He has. He has. God has been too good to us. To, 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 to just give him half-hearted praise. I can't do it anymore. I used to do that. I used to sit there and think me just sitting back there. Mm. But that wasn't my best. God knows in my heart, in my heart, if I'm giving my best. He knows what's in him. See, that's what he looks at. See, that's what he looks at. He knows if we laughing at him. He told Sarah, Sarah, when, when he told her she was going to have a child in her elderly age, he laughed. And, and she said, no, I didn't. I said, yeah, you did. You laughed in your heart. Yeah, I heard you laugh in your heart. See, God looks at the heart. He knows if we trust him. He knows if we're going to obey him. God already knows what we're going to do. So he searches this. Oh, we got to get our heart right. I pray, for, I pray for my heart all the time. I do. Because that's where everything comes from. That's what God looks at. I want a righteous heart. We all ought to want a righteous heart. And the only person that can give you that is God. See, man got his righteousness, but God's righteousness is different. I, got, I want a heart transplant. I want it on the inside because when it's, when it's my time to go, that's what, that's, that's, that's what he's going to look at. He ain't going to look at how, how, how well I was there when you, when you spoke on the 17th, uh, Brother Chris. No, that ain't got nothing to do with it. I ain't going to look how you were dressed when you went to work every day. What was your heart dressed like? Because that's what he's going to examine. That's what he's going to judge in the very end. And, uh, and as I go to my seat, I just want to say, if we're going to be the trust, if we're going to trust God, trust him. If we're going to walk with him, walk with him. Put our faith in everything. It's time out for playing. It's time out for playing, church. It's time out for playing. God is not a player. He don't play. He knows who's for real and he knows who's not. He knows when you say amen and you mean it. He knows when you don't. When you clap your hands, he knows if you mean it. Or if you're doing it because somebody else. I do a lot of soul searching. I have to. 
Because I'm telling you, I'm guilty of a lot of stuff. Ain't going to sit here, I am. And I asked God to fix me. Fix me. And he has. I didn't fix it with him. I know where I'm going. I ain't got no question. Because he, he's fixed it. And he'll fix it for you. He'll fix it. We just got to know God will provide. Quit worrying about where it's going to come from. Quit worrying about this person and that person. Quit worrying about how I'm going to get through. And get on your knees and ask God. Trust him. Trust him. Quit asking man. Quit getting feedback from man all the time. It's all right to listen. But people will, if they see you down, what do they want to do? They want to take you further sometimes. My God ain't never took me down. He ain't never took me down. He ain't never failed me. God has never failed to come through for me. Now, he didn't come through like I thought he was, but it came out better because he knows what's better. So we just got to trust him in all things, not just when it's good, all things. Thank you. Because of who you are, I give you praise. <laughs> that be one. Because Foundation of baptism, who Christmas you experience. are, I give to come. you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, yes, Lord. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Thank you, Jesus. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Jehovah. Father God, my Heavenly Father, we thank you today, God, for your word, Lord Jesus, that come forth today, Lord. It's your servant, your faithful servant, Lord. We thank you for using him today, God. 
We thank you for everything about him, Lord. We just thank you for this service, God, for you being with us and helping us through. Oh, Father God, in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. At this time, offer prayer. You have to raise your hand. You believe in God for whatever you've got in your life or whatever you need. You lift your hand before God. Father God, my Heavenly Father, as we stand here before you today, God, in this service, we thank you, God, for all you're doing right now in this service, Lord. Thank you, God, for coming to see about us. We thank you, Father God, for everything, Lord Jesus, for your word that came forth, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Father God, we want to pray for our pastor, Lord Jesus, Pastor Jones and Sister Jones. We lift them up before you in the mighty name of Jesus, that by your stripes that they are healed in Jesus' name. We pray for Mr. Buddy as well. We lift him up before you in Jesus' name. We have prayed and asked these blessings. Father God, my heavenly Father, we prayer list God we have here. Everyone that's on it, Lord Jesus, we lift them up before you in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, touch everywhere and in any way you can. Even the people that's here today, God, and the ones that wanted to be here and couldn't be here, we lift them up before you, God. Father God, we pray for your healing and your delivering power, God. Oh, Lord, help us all, Lord Jesus. We can't do nothing without you, Father God. Thank you, God, for your great presence upon our lives, God. Thank you, Jesus, for everything, God, the good, the bad, the bitter, and the sweet. We thank you, God, because we know, you, we know that you know what you're doing, God. We know you're in control, and we thank you today, God. We pray, Father God, that you will continue to go before us every day, God, and make every crooked way straight. Father God, in your mighty name, Jesus. Oh, Father God, we just continue to lift you up, God, and give you all glory, honor, and praise. Father God, in the name of Jesus, have your way, have your way in our lives today. In Jesus' mighty name, keep us with your great keeping power like never before. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. At this time, we are announcement by Sister Tracy Beal. Amen. <laughs> 